Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to Spiritual Enrichment Week at Tuskegee University. My name is Dr. David Hodge. I work at the National Center for Bioethics in Research and Healthcare at Tuskegee University. And it is my lot to bring a word for us today. Given the amount of things that are going on in the world, we want this to be an encouraging week for you to let you know that doesn't matter how dark things may look, doesn't matter how harsh things may come, God is still on the throne. God is still in control. It doesn't matter how it looks, doesn't matter how it seems, God is still in control. So I want to thank you today, thank Dr. Gray today for this invitation. I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Thurman for this invitation and for working with me because where I am right now, I am at home in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm suffering on the coronavirus. But the suffering, as I will speak to in a moment, is not, a, is not like an end of the world suffering, but there's something here, and I want to speak to that today. Our conversation today, I have a, a few minutes to talk about looking around, looking around. Um, so let us go in our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 3, beginning with verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to try to keep my voice up. I'm not feeling too well, but I'm going to try to keep my voice up because I want you to be encouraged by this message. So, so just hold on to me for 10, 15 minutes, and I'm sure the Lord will give us a blessing today from God's word. So Deuteronomy chapter 3, beginning with verse 21. The text says, At this time, at that time, I commanded Joshua, you have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God, God's self, will fight for you. Verse 23. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord, O oh, sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatest and your strong hand. For what God, for what God is there in heaven on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan that will um, that find her country and Lebanon. Verse 26. But because of you, the Lord was angry. With me, I will not listen to me. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me anymore about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes. Since you are not going to cross the Jordan, but commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. So he stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. At this particular time in Israel's history, we are looking at the book of Deuteronomy. That means it is the same time period as the book of Exodus. This is one of the books that Moses has been given the credit for having authored. Really, he was not a writer. So basically the story that Moses told. So the books are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These five books are known as the books of Moses, Deuteronomy being the last one. So as you recall that, that in the book of Exodus, beginning in chapter one, the children of Israel were forced to live in heavy bondage in the land of Egypt. And God was was look, God looked down upon the suffering and the struggles of God's people, Israel, because in Genesis chapter 11, the last few verses, the, the um, Abram and his family, Nahor, Terah, um, Sarai, Lot, they had already left Ur of the Chaldees, Chaldeans, and they were journeying to the land of Canaan. And God told them in the 12th chapter, 
Whoever blesses you shall be blessed. Whoever curses you shall be cursed. He went on to say that you, that is Abraham, and your seed will be a blessing to the world. This is your calling. You are my chosen person, and you will be a blessing to the world. That's a powerful statement anywhere. <laughs> for, for, God, for God to look down and say that of all of the people, I have selected you. I have ordained you to a particular responsibility and a particular voice. That is extremely awesome. That's why, that, 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 that's, that's why when you look at what's going on in the world right now with coronavirus and other things, when you know that God has ordained you and destined you to a particular job, you must do it. Regardless of what comes your way, regardless of what shows up, you do it. So Moses led the children of Israel through 40 years of wandering around the mountain. And you read early on in Deuteronomy chapter 3, it says, and you've been going around this mountain too long. The trip should have taken them from, from, from where they were to Canaan, the promised land. It should have taken them no more than two months to move these four people, million people. But because they were hesitant, because they were uh, unwilling to follow God's directive, they ended up suffering in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, some of this has to do with the disobedience of Moses. And Moses is the leader. And God gets upset. And God says to Moses, God said, now, 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 listen, I don't want you to hear, I don't want to hear your language anymore, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because these people are trying you. I want to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you up on the mountain, and I'm going to let you look over and see the promised land. Now, that language is sound familiar. Remember, April the 4th, 19, uh, April the 3rd, 1968, Martin Luther King preached a sermon from that, from that text. And Martin Luther King said, he said, I, I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. He said, I've been to the mountaintop and I looked over and I seen the promised land. He was illustrating what God did to Moses. And of course, April the 4th, 1968, the very next day, he was assassinated. But in this text right here, we have, the text says, verse 21, so God has Moses up on the mountain, and he said, he's saying basically, I'm going to let Joshua get you, get, get, take the people over, but I'm going to go ahead and let you rest, but I want you to see what the land looks like. But here's the thing that I, that I think is powerful right here for us. When you look at verse 26, down to 27, but because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me anymore about this matter. Verse 27, go up to the mountain of Pisgah, Pisgah and look around to the west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes since you're not going to the Jordan, going across to the, or going to the cross this Jordan. Now, what, so Dr. Howe, where are you going with this? Here's what God's instruction. We don't know what tomorrow brings. But God's instructions were very clear. He said, look around and see the north, the east, the west, the south. Look around. What do you see? What do you see? When you, take a, when you take a stock at where you are in your life, look around. What do you see? What do you see? Listen, the, 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 from where I'm standing, I'm at home, as you know, and I'm looking out the window right here. And right here, right inside my window, and my son in April was hit by an SUV. Right there in front of me, right there, right there in the street. On his riding his bike, he got hit by SUV, airlifted, police cars, all of that stuff. 
I ran and I leaped up to the ground and I caught his head. He was having convulsions. And I was so terrified. And in the midst of all of that, I was saying to myself, now my responsibility is to understand this scripture that says all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and the call according to God's purpose. Now, as I'm laying on the ground holding my son, I'm asking the question now, Lord, how is this good? What's good in this? And, and, and the thought comes, look around. Because as I looked around, I saw police cars, saw ambulances, but I also saw about 50 neighbors 50 neighbors, not one of them social distancing, not one of them wearing a mask, but most of them in some posture of prayer and connection because a young man was laying in the street. Look around and see what you see. Look to the north, the, the east, the west, and the south. Look around and see what you see. Sometimes our eyes are constrained by our situation and our problems, and we forget to look around. Why? Because today, this is what, nine months later, and I look around, <laughs> I'm so much closer to my neighbors. I love them. They were right there for us. But even more spectacular, I've watched my son. He's up there. He's COVID too. But I know he's upstairs. And, 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 and you know what? He's not afraid of COVID because he's had that experience. When you have an experience that when, when you start, when you look around and at your experiences, even the worst ones and the harmful ones, and, and look at where you come from. Some of you who are at school right now, some of you watching this right now, are, are, are saying you can't, you're, you're in a home environment that's not a healthy one. You've come through all kinds of battles, but those battles are the kinds of battles that give you a testimony once God has helped you to overcome. So Jonathan, I heard my son Jonathan said, he said, you know, the one thing that accident has done for me is that I'm not afraid of a whole lot of things I used to be afraid of. Yes, God will allow us to go through things. And so when we get on the other side, we now have a testimony. We don't hold and hoard the testimony, but we utilize the testimony to help somebody else. Now, I've got to close this message up. So now to do that, I want to go back to the, to the beginning verse. Verse 21, at the, that time, I commanded Joshua, you have seen with your own eyes. What, what did he say? He says, you have looked around and you have seen with your own eyes what the Lord has done to those kings, what the Lord has done to those who try to oppress you. You've seen it. In other words, past tense, you've looked around and you've seen. Look and take your posture and look what has happened in the past. Look around. In our world, right? If I, in our world, if I ask you, you know, this is called a, this is called an occidental world. The Western world is called an occidental world. If I was to ask you, I say, say, um, where is the future? Most of us will point right there. The future is in front of me. That's what we say. The future is in front of me. Where's the past? We say, well, the past is behind me. That's how we talk. The past is behind me. The future is in front of me. In the Oriental world, the Eastern world, they have a different concept. They believe that the past is in front of me because I can see my past. My eyes can see my past. At the same time, my future is behind me because I can't see it. I'm walking backwards into my future. And as I walk backwards into my future, my past is it becomes my past and my past is now in front of me. In other words, what God is saying here is look around. Let's look and see what you see. Once you've seen, now look at verse 22, do not be afraid of them. Why? The Lord, your God, God's self will fight for you. Paul tells us, I have not given you, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love power and a disciplined mind. 
We are not supposed to be fearful. When you look around, you're looking, you're looking is not about what is happening in the right now, so much as you're looking at what has happened in the past, as what God has already done that prepares you for what God is now doing so that you can do what God wants you to do. Look around. So I said earlier, um, you know, COVID is a very bad situation. <laughs> and you say, well, Dr. Hodge, how could you be laughing? Because what I just tell you, let the Lord fight your battles. Let the Lord fight your battles. Let the Lord fight your battles. Look around. And when time you look around, you look at the North, East, West, and South. In other words, you look at the past as well. And you remember what God did. Right now, if you think hard enough, five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, exactly to this day, you were struggling with something. But you have to think very hard to figure out what that something was. You know why? Because God has already delivered you from that. And whatever you're going through today, God shall deliver you from that as well. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you, Dr. Gray, for the invitation. And I want to say blessings upon you. Peace, shalom, and assalamu alaikum. Take care.